Welcome back everyone to another episode of Dark Souls 3 Lore Through. Um, I found what I was looking for. I just needed to kind of... I think I needed to go back to Firelink Shrine to have him go away essentially. And then he appears here which is good. Here's Orbeck as he came to the... Can I break this chair now though? No, okay. You get Orbeck's ashes. Him with a scroll. Um, Orbeck was fascinated with sorcery, but without means, he so offered to serve as an assassin in exchange for acceptance into the Dragon Academy, believing that one day he could reinvent himself as a sorcerer. So that's interesting. I mean, we kind of heard that story at the very end there, but he um, he got accepted into the Dragon Academy because he agreed to be a spook. Um, she's turning away from me. I don't know why that is. Is that because I'm a Rosaria Finger? Um, I don't know what that means. Ah, well met, Ashen One. How may I be of service? Well, well, but as better as me. Uh -huh. She doesn't say anything terribly different. All right. Oh, no. Duh. <laughs> I was like, okay, don't give her the, uh, the Umbral Ash. Uh, okay. I wanted to get the Morian Blade. Um. Can I kill Yuria for it? I'll look it up. I'll wait um, to the end, but um, if you don't have enough, and uh, you can kill, if you kill him, he gets ashes. So you can't get this. You just can't get the Morian blade. Okay, well it says, a twisted sword resembling the towers of Londor's sable church. Eight branching blades of thorns induce bleeding. The church's blessing makes the weapon revel in the agony of its owner. Heavy losses of HP boost attack, a curse most befitting its deformed appearance. That's too bad. Alright, so we got a bunch of new items here. We have the Ferrum set. Um, because we killed that Ferrum guy who was a black hand. Helm named after a god of war. The armor of the Ferosa Lion Knights, as we previously talked about, the Lion Knight is probably referring to Ornstein, trained by Ornstein, because we know Ferosa is uh, Drang Lake, was preserved, uh, Drang Lake. Well, Ferosa was, uh, uh Lord Lordran. Uh, the Frost Lion Knights was preserved even after the destruction of their homeland and is mentioned in numerous legends alongside the names of those who are said to have gone beyond death. Sunless Veil. Attire of a knight from the Sunless Realms known for their resistance to both magic and the dark. Formed of a silk veil and silver headband. Sunless Knights serve the Nameless Moon and perhaps it is for this reason their attire casts a feminine silhouette. Okay. Lorien's Helm. Armor of the Prince Lothric's older brother, Lorien. This black dyed brass helm is patterned with flame. 
Lorien, raised as a knight, is said to have been left mute and crippled by his younger brother's curse. It is also said that Lorien, in fact, wished it so. But this black dyed brass armor was passed down to him from the royal family. So yeah, not only was um, he he was made mute and crippled because their souls are entwined, but Lorien took that burden on, uh, in a sense. Black Hand Hat, a tire of the hunters known as the King's Black Hands. Uh, this wide brim hat is emblematic of the role. Black Hand was a title established to honor hunters who served successive kings. To date, no more than three such individuals have borne this distinction. So it was like Yuri or whatever, Goddard, and that other person. We have their weapons and stuff. Assassin's Gloves. So this is uh, Orbex stuff. Normally a deep blue color, this black variation is a sign of a sorcerer engaged in surreptitious work. These were covert agents who excelled at manipulating sound. Um, okay, that's it. Now it's Dallas at the time. Huh. I should move on. All right. All right, so we'll obviously see what we can make with that. But let's first go and grab some items here. Sunless Talisman. By the way, um, Kamui was the other one. And Krimhild, no, she wasn't, she wasn't the one. But anyway, Talisman given to the Knights of the Sunless Realms to serve the Nameless Moon. Scales with intelligence, but which is rare for a miracle catalyst, but makes it compatible with dark. In the Sunless Realms, this fact is related first as an initial warning. So yeah, I guess uh, that's kind of the whole Gwendolyn storyline. Um, thanks for not fighting me. Uh, yeah, we got everything there. Um, so now let's go to, um, Ludlith, hear about what he's doing, uh -huh. so. I have, wait, so who did we kill last time? We have anything else? I guess mm, the Dragon Slayer armor. Do we still have that soul? I guess we probably don't need it. Twin Princes, Lothric's holy sword, Prince Lothric's straight sword, blessed by Emma with potent magic. So that was the other thing. Emma's the high priestess of Lothric, um, and she was there by the wet nurse to Lothric. So. Young Lothric was meant to be a champion and was expected to wield this platinum sword, but some things will remain distant dreams forever. Assume stance to imbue sword with sacred light and use strong attack to release light together with the great thrust of, it, of the sword. Alter Great Sword of Lorien, Prin Prince Lothric's older brother, cast in smoldering molten steel and stained black. It's funny, they're called twins, but they're not twins. Unless, maybe they are twins, but Lothric is, you know, a minute older. 
Before Lorien embraced his brother's curse, he was a knight who single-handedly slayed the demon prince. But the victory eternally scorched his sword with flame. That becomes a story point that we will certainly investigate later. But, uh, yeah, the demon prince uh, who Lorien defeated... The flame of Lorien lunge forward to transform Smolder into flame and follow with strong attack to launch flame across the ground. Melted iron great axe that once formed part of the Dragon Slayer armor, thickly imbued with the power of lightning, use skill to draw upon the techniques used to slay arch dragons. Melted Iron Shield that once formed part of Dragon Slayer armor. The shield offers high protection to lightning, which the Dragon Slayer commanded as his own, and its skill has faint echoes of Dragon Slayer's own fighting style. Treat the fire keeper not to Okay. Um she is turning away from us for some reason. I don't know if it's because of something where Wearing or something? I don't know what's going on. Um, I guess we'll... Welcome home, sweet. Very well, then take me. Um, what do we want here? I mean, I suppose... We've been complaining about endurance. Well, Ashley. Um. Okay, so let's go get. Let's go get more and stuff. And then we can do the Rosaria's fingers thing. By the way, I did, since I respect, I did kill some, uh, one of the maggots inside Rosaria's room and it dropped the Xanthus crown and Heisel's pick. But we had already gotten both of those from killing the invasion once. So I didn't really talk about it. But Heisel was a, the yellow finger, so. Um, okay. Great hammer bestowed upon Kareem Knights with, with demonstrate outstanding strength and unwavering faith. Decorated by a warding charm of Kareem Temple and imbued with the twisted rage of Apostle Morn. Stick whip and endure earth and emit a powerful shockwave. I guess that's the similar to. Um, Wrath of the Gods, also similar to Perseverance, temporarily boosts poise and reduce damage received. A deformed great shield <coughs> given to Igon of Kareem upon being conferred knighthood. The giant woman's face that protects Igon is that of his sister, some years his senior. senior. Moan, offer a gentle prayer to the shield, causing the woman's face to give out a low moan and attract enemies. That's really creepy. All right. Oh, I can't believe I forgot the Morian blade. Sunlight's talisman. Okay, let's go to Rosaria. So I think I realized my error here, um, cause I was like, why didn't she, or why did I didn't start Leonard's line? It's because I didn't like actually offer her a pale tongue, like as a, as an item.
So is that Gertrude? Is that Guinevere? <clears throat> is that someone else? But you see now that I've done this. Um, I'm going to do this too, just so you can see it closer up. Okay, what? See, look at that. That looks like the Saints Bident. I just have more opportunity to, like, show it. It indicated to me that perhaps this was Klimt, but then we saw someone do it in the archives as well, so it certainly is just his... It's probably his miracle. This, this guy is definitely special. He fires. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out because I often came here to farm and so... Ah, so you've chosen to serve Rosaria after all. She will be pleased with me for finding her another finger. <laughs> but be warned, my friend. Rosaria's fingers need only fetch tongues for their mistress. Otherwise, we are free, unchained. Like Yellowfinger, you can choose to believe that all fingers share camaraderie. But do not force your romance upon the rest of us. <laughs> hmm. Rosaria's fingers need only fetch tongues for their mistress. Otherwise, we are free, unchained. You are free to believe that all fingers but do not force your <laughs> Okay. We just quit out here and come back. And then Rosaria is dead. I get the black eye orb. We can still do everything, so it doesn't really matter. Arcane orb left on Rosaria's corpse. Have faith her soul can be retrieved by invading the world of her killer and returning victorious. The black eye is proof of vengeance, but often appears serene as it casts its gaze towards Irithyll. So I guess that's our clue, although... I would say probably Anorlando is a better bet. I thought it was in the same place. But I guess it's not. Where do I... Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I forgot. Oh, 
How silly of me, in fact. Let's go up Smo's lift this time. I remember him being a little bit more difficult than that, but so be it. So now we get Soul of Rosaria, which looks really weird, Crescent Moon Sword, and the Silver Mask. Soul of Rosaria, Mother of Rebirth, stolen by Ringfinger Leonard. Leonhard. Return this to her extant corpse, and Mother Rosaria will spring back to life, as if nothing had even happened. Um, Crescent Moon Sword. Ringfinger Leonard's weapon of choice, a type of shotel imbued with the power of the moon. Leonard set out on a journey of rebirth, but decided instead to serve the goddess as a knight and inherited this weapon. In his youth, Leonard suffered grave burns to his entire body, his face in particular, which he hid beneath his mask, was terribly scalded. He abstained from restoring these injuries even after becoming a finger of Rosaria. It's interesting. Um, this kind of sounds like he set on a journey of rebirth, so he wanted to become a finger, but decided to instead serve the goddess as a knight and inherited this weapon. So, knight imbued with the power of the moon, a goddess. So maybe Gwendolyn, and if if Gwendolyn. The the other thing is that the uh, the the uh, dark moon knightess was also severely burned or severely um, uh, hideous underneath her um, her brass armor and she's also associated with the moon those are just the associations I'm coming up with I don't know what the like final story is with that um, Okay, yeah, I think... Let us just go back to the shrine. I mean, there's a few items we've missed, <laughs> um, just in general, but, you know, I think we're good. Yeah, she doesn't turn away from me, but I'm still a Rosaria. I don't know why she did that. Maybe she just ah. does it randomly. Uh, and then we can get Leonard's stuff, which I'm just going to guess is at the bottom. Here. Garb of Ringfinger Leonard. Leonard was born into royalty, which is believed to be the reason for his skill in both sorcery and swordsmanship. Indeed, the stingy garb is in fact embroidered with gold thread, betraying its purpose as military wear designed for a noble. So that's interesting. Never really paid attention to Leonard's story, so. Ashen one. All right. 
Ah, well met. Tis good to see ye in good health. What needs me? Oh, by the way, if you fight, they come. Okay. Um. Still chunks yet. Pretty like that. Uh. No. Ashen one. All right. So we have the soul of Rosaria, and we can actually trade that in, transpose it with Bloodlift. Aha. Uh -huh. So. So we can use the soul of the dancer for soothing sunlight, and the soul of Rosaria for bountiful sunlight, <laughs> which is odd. Both of these are the uh, um, the miracles of Guinevere given to the maidens of Guinevere, and we find them in the 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 archives in Dark Souls One. As we kill those Basakas, there's two of them crying. We know that he's been experimenting on the maidens. So again, like, does this indicate that either one of these are Guinevere, or do they indicate like it's Rosaria, therefore, you know, Gertrude, because she knows her mother's special miracle granted by the Princess of Sunlight. The miracles of Guinevere loved as both mother and wife bestow their blessing on a great many warriors. So it specifically refers to her as a wife here. And I believe that's all that you can get from her soul. No, no. Um, so I guess all that's left here is to Place his cinders. Yes, we do it here. Uh, just in case it's stuck to your area, I should have just done this right away. Ah, uh, our thine heart is fixed upon the linking of the fire. No. Nope. But, brave usurper, I prithee, so that we hollows, in most honest shape of man, may have it for our own. Nothing new. Our lord, and I prithee, when the yep. our lord of hollow. Oops. Honorable use, so that we... Yeah, we, I got it, I'll do it. The five lords sit their five thrones. All thanks to thee, most worthy of lords. Ashen one, with the lords as thy witness, bend thy knee afore the bonfire's coiled sword, and let the lords' embers acknowledge thee as their true heir, a true lord, fit to link the fire. Ashen one, then has the Oops. little Lord Ludleth spoken to thee of any curious matters? Yes. I sense that he possesseth some knowledge mm -hmm. of a thing once most precious or most terrible, now lost to the fire keepers. Pray tell, is it a matter of which I should be apprised? No. Ashen one, may I pass over it? Farewell, may the... Noble Lords of Cinder, 
fades. And the lords go without thrones. How does she know what to do? Surrender your fires to the true heir. Let him grant death to the old gods of Lordran, deliverers of the first flame. Is there like a firekeeper training school? Is all I'm asking. I realize that I might should not have done that. Um, I don't know if Ludlith has anything to say, um, and he will be dead from now on. So perhaps I should have triggered this only after I had done everything else. But you know. Yeah. So. We are back in a dark. In a dark Firelink Shrine. It's called the Flameless Shrine. Yep. Now we can see that the sun is just full-on bleeding and Lothric and the entire world seems to be kind of falling in on itself which is a real cool image but it also kind of you know, it's an indication of what's going on. All the worlds converging at Lothric. At Lothric. So that says proceed to the first flame. We're actually not going to do that. But I do want to unlock this bonfire. Uh, just because we'll, we'll do that in due time. But now we can come back and we can travel to Firelink Shrine. And now we're just back here. And Ludlith, although he has no more dialogue, unfortunately. We can still use him. But also, he left the skull ring. One of Corlin's transposed wonders derived from the soul of a soul feeder. The soul feeder was a beast that insatiably absorbed souls to feed its own power. Even after its accursed corpse was burned, it is said that the pungent stench of souls left the air permanently stained. One of Corlin's transposed wonders. Soul feeder. Hmm. Um, so yeah, that's 
almost Dark Souls 3. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm talking like that. Like, we have so much more to go and so much more story to tell. However, it's not really related to Aldrich and, and all that stuff anymore. It's more related to, I guess, the first games, kind of. Well, the, I, I'll take it back. We have a lot more story about Sullivan and stuff like that. But, um, we, I don't know, I'm just, it's a, it's definitely a bit of a change with the, um, uh, DLCs, which is good. Um, but, first, to set up the next, um, episode. on because I was running through this place um, but if you look down here that's the area where there's like a million of those and then there's like Carla and rats and Xanthus ashes all that stuff oh I got one of these hats and I don't think we ever read it. I'll make a note for myself to do that at the beginning of next episode. Well, I guess we'll go to a bonfire and we can grab it. If we haven't read it, if, or if we have read it, you know, we'll read it again. So I'm pretty sure I got one and I was just like, oh, great. And then, I don't know. So yeah, this is a little bit of a secret. So as we were talking about, you know, like, oh, interesting. That's actually a, an enemy here. Um, so yeah, there's some Lothric Knights here. Looks like there's just in general a bunch of different people, but we knew that the Consumed King was obsessed with dragons and the way of the dragon, and that would have been um, done through, um, Archdragon Peak in this world. So I'm going to do the path, or the way of the dragon meditation, and I'm going to, as they say, envision Archdragon Peak, as the dragon torso stone told me. Unfortunately, there's not a uh, bonfire right away. So, behind the Syros, we found uh, found one of these guys and a bunch of dead ones of these guys and these guys are obviously um I, I don't know I think they're trying to become dragons I think that's their like story I am just trying to find a bonfire where is the bonfire for this 
Did I skip it? Or is it literally like you just go? Because I know. Oh, a lightning gem. Is that the first one of those? Nope. By the way, that one item that I was like, oh, what is this? And whatever it was. You probably don't know what I was talking about. But in the in the rafters was um was a blessed gem, which we did get before. Huh. Yeah, as I <laughs> I probably should, like, you know, do more research on this game if I'm going to play it. But it's meant to be a lore through, it's not meant to be an expert's guide. So I'm trying my best, that's all. Oh, we get chunks from these guys, perfect. There's a bonfire closer than this, but um, but you know, well, that's cool. Cool view of the sun, but I guess not. So, all right, let's take a look real quick. Let's see what time we're at here. Okay, good. What a good time. Uh. Yeah, here. Aristocrat's mask. I just feel like we didn't read this. Mask worn by the jailers of Irithil Dungeon. Nobleman delighted in its plump features. The jailers were among the few survivors inhabiting the profane capital, later serving under Pontiff Sullivan. Perhaps the screams emanating from the cells helped them to forget their old home. Maybe we did read that. Sometimes it's a little bit um, hard to remember everything. Oh, not a dynamite shot. Alright, that was it for real. I can hear a bell. Alright, cool. Well, next time we'll take on Arch Dragon Peak, which is actually not that huge of an area, but. It's got a boss, it's got, it's got two bosses. Ah, it's got two bosses and yeah, one, yeah. Okay, <laughs> we'll do this next time. Uh, should be fun uh, and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching, bye.